Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so I ditched Aaron last night and uh, actually I went and had a beer without him. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> Me and Lisa did and uh, we had some work to discuss. But anyway, <clears throat> we're back this morning and uh, got everything prepped and ready to rock. I mean, I, I checked out the sled, Aaron, and I mean, it looks top dollar. All right, I, man. I, I think it's awesome. So I guess we're ready to stab this thing on, huh? Yeah, let's uh, get this flying in the air safely and shuffle this rail underneath this thing. Yeah, so kind of the sequence here that, that him and I usually do <clears throat> is this thing has been, has been built on the stands as we showed you in the first video at the right height to get us what we want for our cooking grade height. If you stage everything at whatever your final dimensions will be, it's a lot easier just to visualize that and not have to compensate for a bunch of stuff. Like we're already at 36, measurements are real now, especially if the scene is level and the floor is level, which in this case, we're lucky. It's pretty good floor in here. The upstairs was not level at all. No, this floor is a lot better. This is a nice rink, that's a skate park. Yeah, so. <laughs> Um, what we're what we're going to do here then is lift up both ends of this. This thousand gallon tank right now probably weighs with the firebox and everything on it. I'm just going to guess it's probably up close to about three thousand pounds right now, maybe you know. Um, so we don't want to just like lift in the middle and have a bunch of stuff swinging around. So two gantries, two pieces of lifting equipment is great. And uh, we've got this rig so we can lift this end up off the ground enough to get these stands out of the way. And the same thing on the other end, we don't put that plate on the end of the firebox because we want to stab those forks up inside. And uh, we're lifting that from inside the, the, the firebox, just going to lift it up a little bit, same deal down there. And it should just slide right in, you think, think it will? I mean, if Aaron's worth a crap, it should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you laid all this out on the table and, yeah. and it seemed... We had a template, I mean, we, we measured and checked again. We, we mirrored our legs to make sure those are kind of being the same. So, I mean, all the check boxes are checked. So hopefully yeah. uh, all the boxes are checked. So hopefully we can get this first time. Yeah, and we haven't rehearsed any of this. So, that you know, sometimes we may find a mistake that we made. Um, we're going to own up to it. You know, we're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes and be that Yeah, guy. there's nothing yeah. to be ashamed of that. This is a yeah. process. Uh, we're constantly learning and discovering new whoops, you know, yeah. so things happen. Yeah, so if you're if you're smarter than us and you know better ways than us and you comment in the description, you're always welcome to do that because this is for the help of the community, not us trying to take some position that we're better than everybody. No, we're, we're just having a good time. Yeah, here. yeah. No strings so, attached. <laughs> yeah, only thing missing right now is beer because it's work time. So, but anyway, we'll get right into this. How about that? All right, let's do it. All right. Aaron's pulling those uh, stands out from underneath of this thing and, and something that you need to really pay attention to is now things are swinging, they're up in the air, always watch your safety stuff. If you need uh, some advice on how to lift heavy things and stuff like that, I actually did a podcast about it. Um, it's on this channel, go all the way back in the day, I don't know, a year ago or so, and there's a talking head video of me driving the truck talking about how to move heavy things. So. Um, but anyway, biggest thing is, is communicate with your buddy that's helping you because if you're going to move something, tell him before you do it. Don't just start pushing and jerking because that's how people get hurt. So there we go. So now we're relying on our, our lifting devices to hold this thing up in the air. So we're going to get, we're going to keep ourselves out from under it. Absolutely. And if we have to shove something that's in an awkward position, we're going to use a long stick or a piece of tubing or something like that even a strap or something to hang yeah. around it and jerk stuff around. Um, now I guess the goal is to get this thing on the ground, flip it over, huh? Yeah, let's get it flipped. That's pretty even. Yeah. That looks good. What about the back? Yeah. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're just kind of visually lining things up. Uh, when we made those rails, they're the exact same width as our propane tank. So. That's gonna allow you to sit straight and look down the side of the tank and see where that rail's gonna live. 
and we're just getting close now until we get lower. And once we get down there, we'll have a better idea. So right now we're just checking out where this leg is gonna interface with the weld seam. And we don't wanna be on it, we wanna be just off it, which is what we planned, so. Yeah. We're just kind of visually checking it out. Yeah, and then what we'll do, but we won't just like let it down and make contact. We're gonna start lowering it down incrementally, getting a little bit closer, eyeballing, making some adjustments. Because one thing I know that we're gonna wind up doing is there's a seam on that back half of this tank that looks to me like it could sit right on top of the horizontal seam that could sit on top of that upright potentially. You may run into that also. So what you would have to do is actually like take a grinder in there, kind of clean that out a little bit to accommodate that seam so that you're not rick racking on the stand. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And none of these tanks are straight. They're, they're all over the place. So sure. you're always gonna have to make some kind of compensation. What do you think, buddy? I think it's a good starting point. Let's uh, slow it down. it down, yeah. Okay, here we go. Alright, oh, looks great, dude. Man, I mean, I think I could weld all those with, with uh, no crazy filling. Yeah. So now I guess the thing to do is, uh, now, now I think the thing to do would be to uh, get out a level and a square, make sure that our cook chamber is level, check that compared to the sled, see where it's at um, for twist or yaw and whatever you want to do. Um, and I, I and think just go as it, that. Yeah, as it looks right now, uh, some of our legs are, are closer to the weld seams than the other weld seams. So we're just going to simply even those out so they look aesthetically fine. It really doesn't matter if it's forward or back three to five to six inches. It's a long enough span, it'll, it'll still be stout and, and steady. So we're going to even up those weld seams and then start removing the paint from our tanks and, and get a nice beat on there. All right, so uh, the tank has landed. It's under its own legs, uh, but they're not quite in the spot we want them. So what I'm doing now is I'm referencing this weld seam and the leg, and I'm trying to get this even throughout the whole cooker. So right now we have two and three quarters inch from this edge of this two inch to the weld seam. But that is not the case on the other end here. So as we move down the pit and we look at the next weld seam, our leg is overlapping this by maybe a quarter inch. And if we look at our final leg, we have maybe an inch between this and the weld seam. So this is our problem right here. We need to get this leg off of the weld seam. We have plenty of real estate on that leg, and we have about an inch to move on this leg. So that tells me we need to shift the rail, the skid, about an inch that way, and that should be perfect for home. Now we gotta redo all that crap and start over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right guys, so just like Aaron was just talking about, we got some stuff that needs adjusted on where the placement of the sled under the smoker. Not a big deal, super easy, but I'll be honest with you, dude, I'm really impressed with the fit up on that. You know, and you nailed it. it. It looks good, man. Way to go. Well, you called the right guy. So, <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the gist is, is we're gonna lift this tank up, but at the same time, we have to rotate that, as Aaron just said, to get this collector box level so our smokestack's not doing one of these on the sled. Now, truth be told, the consumer can always just like put some blocks or something under the sled and level things up and get it looking right. But we want everything to be clocked together. In other words, that this plane is on the same as the foot of the sled. That makes our cooking grates clocked right. Everything's together. So um, this, is, this is one of those pivotal moments in the design of this pit and the assembly of it. So what, what we're gonna do is we've got this chain here and we're using a chain and a gantry because we can kind of reposition this through this through the lengths of this chain a little bit to kind of control a grab point and spin around. And then we've moved it back away from this collector because there's feet underneath of this here. And we left those feet on on purpose. Uh, something you're always gonna have to do if you're building pits professionally and you plan on selling this thing, you're gonna have to have something for the truck driver to tie to or the consumer when they're hauling it. And so in this case, the, the feet on this tank were like more like a V uh, groove, almost like uh, it would put there on purpose for that purpose, for, for the purpose of hauling this thing, right? Yeah. 
And so we're just going to leave those. Like, don't get all hung up on cutting all that stuff off because a lot of times, especially with this bill from my buddy Ken, functionality is more important than the looks, but you can also kind of blend some of those elements into what you're doing. So yep. uh, anyway, so the, for, the, for the, the first objective is we're gonna raise this back up. We don't have to go really high up. We just gotta go up enough so that this sled is loose and then we can slide this around and figure out where, where we want it. And I think it's only gotta move an inch, you said? Yeah. That way? Which yeah. doesn't sound much, but this thing's heavy. <laughs> this thing's heavy, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to lift on the back end with the forklift. Aaron's going to drive this side, lift it up. We're going to slide this thing down an inch. And then while we're at it, we're going to set it back down and think about how to twist it. And that's where the links in the chain and the feet on this end come into play. guys so we got this end of the cooker lifted up a little bit got everything lined up and scooted the sled down and stuff like that now what we're doing is we're getting these legs prepped to be able to weld up onto this cook chamber and what Aaron's doing is he's got the torch uh, he went in there with a needle scaler and a grinder and he kind of cleaned the paint up around the edge where he could reach but he can't really get down inside where the tube's at and you're going to be burning in at that spot so he's taking the torch and just kind of burning that paint off where it's going to be uh, unreachable by the grinder and stuff. Whenever he's done with that, basically we're going to go in here and start welding every one of these legs onto the cooker, make sure it's level, uh, like the top of the cooker's level, and it's even with the same plane as the sled. Then we're going to be good to go. Okay, we, uh, we're here on the legs and uh, we just left the torch. We got all the paint burned back. Um, we did that because we can't always get in there, but it looks nice and clean now. It's not too warm. We didn't really preheat anything. We just got the paint off. So we're going to lay down some beads. Get this thing locked down. First thing you want to do is turn your welder on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hilarious. Walk of shame. Any, right. any tips for the haters real quick before we get started? Um, hate on, brother. <laughs> so hey we got uh all this well we he got all this welded up you we know. yeah we did good job man that was awesome and uh so now we're ready to lose our uh, vertical support here yeah you know it's about time to let her down on her own two feet so dude <laughs> really good job making the sled and everything like it's you can tell mr voigt was involved on the sled because it's just got his signature all over it it really looks good thank you thanks. and uh you know i'm still blown away that this floor is as level as it was and we actually went ahead uh and slapped a level on it and uh, the guy that made the floor did a freaking good job because this is the first concrete floor i believe i've ever worked on anywhere that did not have like weird pitches and stuff but anyway yeah so great job on this i think we're ready to close this video out and move yeah. on to doors aren't we it is the next step yes yeah. it is well hey guys i appreciate you watching along and uh you know if you see anything in the video you got questions about there's a couple ways to get answers uh, three ways, really. The first way is we have an online community, smokerbuilderu.com. That's smokerbuilder, the letter u.com. And there's a link in the description for it. But you can go over there and hang out with guys like me and Aaron. As a matter of fact, just a little bit ago, we did a live in there and just and did a Q&A in there during the middle of this build uh, for the members there. And that's free. You don't have to pay anything to get access to that. So Join up Smoker Builder U. Um, the second thing you can do is get the plans that we're drawing for this build. Yep. Uh, we're uh, currently, Lance is uh, probably a good halfway through them and uh, I can't wait to see the finished product. This will be like our 200 and I don't know, 59th set of plans or I, something I think for every, <laughs> every cooker known to man could be on there. There's a lot Yeah, that's there. infinite. We could keep drawing. So um, anyway, I'm super excited to have that available. You'll be able to build along with us on that. The third thing you can do is just drop it in the comments here. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to keep up with all of the comments, but I do monitor them and so does, so does a few other people on our team. And uh, you can just ask questions in the comments and we'll give you some pretty good answers or at least 
point you the right direction, yeah. you know, to get an answer. Sure. So, um, anything you want to say about the build so far? What do you think about it? Man, well, I'm grateful that our initial homework panned out. It doesn't always, but it did this time, and uh, this thing fit pretty quickly, really, mm -hmm. and uh, we got all that documented. You can kind of watch that as we go, but um, I'm just grateful that it's coming together, mm -hmm. and usually when projects kind of just start fitting into place, everything's kind of going good, it's going to be a good result at the mm -hmm. end, and uh, I'm really excited about that. So it's yeah. already on a great track. Yeah. Well, hey guys, I appreciate you. Like I said, head on over to Smoker Builder U and uh, get involved over there in our community. There's also some online courses that we uh, we update regularly, pretty much every week, um, and uh, you can take advantage of those too. Till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, and we're gonna cut doors. Let's do it. Let's cut some doors. All right. See you guys.